Hi, and welcome back to another edition of the Venice Symphony Education Spotlight. I'm here today with Mr. Michael Algria. Michael, how are you today? I'm doing okay. <laughs> doing okay. Now, how's your summer bed? That's going to be the big question that everybody's going to ask, but I noticed that there's some things in the background that maybe dictate what your summer's been like a little bit. Uh, well, about three weeks ago, uh, I tore my ACL and meniscus, so that's been fun. I go into surgery uh, on Tuesday. Uh, to get that all fixed right before school starts. So today is the 30th of July. So yeah, right before school starts. So that uh, that was an unfortunate turn of events. Um, and then most of my summer has been spent doing lots and lots and lots of research um, uh, for safety for you know the upcoming school year. Uh, I've been taking a lot of professional development. Um, and it's, I mean, I know we've had like an extended summer, uh, but it's just been an extended, um, the figuring things out, you know? Yeah, it, the, we definitely have now, although I'm at the Venice Symphony Beach House here, we're definitely still doing work and we haven't right. stopped trying to mm -hmm. figure things out. So hopefully you'll be literally back on your feet again, both in the classroom and in life soon. Uh, Michael, tell us a little bit about where you teach and, and what some of the, the groups and things you do at that school. Um, I currently teach at Atwater Elementary School. Um, I teach general music, kindergarten through fifth grade, um, but I also have a chorus. Um, I also have a, a, a rather a rather large um, a violin program for fourth and fifth grade. Um, uh, last year I had about 40 students in, enrolled in it. Um, and then uh, I also uh, helped with the theater club at the school. We were working on a on our first musical, <laughs> and then you know COVID nineteen happened. Um, and then I also uh, am the assistant marching band director at Northport High School, um, and that has taken up a lot of my time. Today's our very last day uh, for band camp, so uh, we're really excited about that. Um, and that that took up a, a big part of my summer was was preparing for for marching band. Um, and then I am also the executive director for the Northport Symphony, which is a local community orchestra here, right in here in Northport. And I think that's our biggest thing is adapting to these changes. I know mm -hmm. we've had to do it as teachers too. And uh, one of the neat things that I know that you did over the, the last part of the school year was, was use a new piece of technology called Flipgrid mm -hmm. to communicate and work with your students. Tell us a little bit about what, what Flipgrid's all about. So Flipgrid is, this really amazing uh, piece of technology um, that's really simplistic in nature. Uh, uh, it's, it's a way for students to be able to submit short videos of themselves performing. Um, and Flipgrid wasn't originally created for music. It was originally created as a way um, for people to share, uh, for, for educators to share content with each other, um, uh, you know, in, in, in a virtual manner, and it's really an international platform. Uh, as a music teacher, the, the best part about it is the, those students that maybe have that performance anxiety, you know, playing in front of their peers, especially in elementary, uh, it's a great way for them to really showcase what they're capable of. Um, you know, you get those students that are, uh, you know, maybe they're too cool for school, you know, and then they might not sing for you, you know, in fourth and fifth grade. But then on Flipgrid, all of a sudden they're singing their hearts out, and you're able to make you're able to make a more personable connection with the students uh, through it. And it's such a simple software. It's just you log in, you click the big green button, and you make your recording. And it's just another great way for students, maybe maybe in written language they can't get their their thoughts out, but maybe in spoken language they can. So it's just another avenue for students to show show their knowledge and to show that they they are capable and i think just that's why flipgrid is so powerful and it's so easy to use on top of it you can get an app on it and kids are kids are so eager to use technology and that's the thing kids have been used to using this technology so then when you can trick them into learning using technology at the same time it's even better 
Right. Um, Mr. Alegria works with us through our summer music camp program. And I remember one of the things that kids would love is the different technology you would bring into it, whether it's using uh, staff wars, which is a way of playing yeah. different notes or recorder of instruments and almost like a Star Wars kind of thing. And uh, there's a, a piece of technology that you use that you're going to tell us a little bit about today in our lesson. Um, tell us about what the Chrome Music Lab is all about. So Chrome Music Lab uh, is this wonderful tool uh, especially for our younger our younger students, they they can be as creative as they want, and they're able to explore a lot of different things. the The number one thing that I really love about it is the song maker. It's a great way to introduce composition um, in uh, in a pre notation um, kind of uh, uh, in a kind of way. Um, so uh, it uses lots of colors, uses lots of shapes, um, and uh, it's, it's, it's so easy to use and so intuitive. Um, and kids love making, making the music. I, that was one of my main projects for the entire school. Um, and you, know, you could see the creativity really unleash in the, in the younger, in the younger like K through two, where they really thought up of really good stuff. And then as we got into third, fourth and fifth grade, you could see it being starting to organize a little bit more and to be more thoughtful in the process. Um, I actually had a situation with a first grader and, and um, this first grader kind of, he, he struggled a little bit in, in my class. Um, and, you know, he just kind of came to music and was like, blah about it. But then when we went to the, when we went to distance learning and he started using Chrome Music Lab, you know, he said he made a really good point. And it's just one of those, those maturity things. Um, he said, well, if I just put a bunch of random stuff up there, it doesn't sound too great. But if I stop and think and really, really put effort into my song maker, uh, it sounds really good. And, you know, for those for those kids to make those connections. I mean, that's why we teach, right? That's, that's exactly why we teach, to make them you know, better human beings. And the fact that he got that lesson from, from Chrome Music Lab and Song Maker is really great. But having that creation and having that less intimidating environment is, is fun and you're learning at the same time. Right. Um, what Michelle Agria presented for us today is we're gonna have a tutorial going over just how to do that and mm -hmm. how to create some things. And the neat thing is, when you're done, you can even share and send links to the projects and the creations you have. So mm -hmm. in our notes underneath the YouTube video today, we'll have the links for some of the different programs that Mr. Algria talked about, as well as even some songs that we've created, whether it's pop songs or classical pieces, that you can see how they look so you can create your own or add to it and uh, just continue to have fun with them. There's so many... There's so many different resources of technology out there these days um, that I think have always been out there, um, but out of necessity, now they've become, now, now we see more value in them, if that makes sense. Now we see the more value of them and how um, they'll be part of the new normal. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's how techno new technology is made. It's made out of necessity, and this is definitely necessity. No, great. And music obviously is a necessity and great teachers like yourself is, is what keeps that going. Mr. Algria, thank you so much for your time today joining us here. And we can't wait to learn about Chrome Music Lab and all these other neat things that you're discovering throughout the summer here. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. This summer's Education Spotlight is brought to you by the Venice Symphony and the 2020 Giving Challenge. All of our past episodes are available to check out to learn from different educators throughout our region. And all those links are below in the description of this YouTube file. Now, as Mr. Alegria demonstrates how to use Chrome Music Lab, you'll see more links to different files and different examples from him and from his students to show you some of the great creations that you can do. Wait, think you have a great creation? We would love to see it. When you're done with yours, please go on the bottom and hit save. You'll see a link that shows up. Copy and paste that link. Take that link and send it to us at education at the Venice Symphony org. We can't wait to share your creations in future episodes of Education Spotlight. Thanks again for joining us today. Let's keep learning together.
Hi everyone, my name is Michael Alegria and I am the music teacher at Atwater Elementary. And today I'm going to show you how to use Chrome Music Lab. So step one, let's find out how to get to Chrome Music Lab. The easiest way to do it is to go to Google and just type in Chrome Music Lab. From here, you click the very first one. Chrome Music Lab is not a program where you have to download anything. It's just, it, it works on any kind of uh, web browser. Uh, you could use one on your iPad, you could use it on your cell phone, or you can use it on a regular computer. It works on anything that has a browser, which makes it super accessible to everyone. Once you click on Chrome Music Lab, you get all of these really fun activities here um, that really engage uh, everyone in music. My favorite is the song maker. So I'll click on the song maker and we'll make a song. That's exactly it. You don't need to know anything about reading music. Uh, you just have to be creative. That's it. Um, so the way it works is uh, all these circles down here create a beat. So let's go ahead and create a beat. Uh, I'll do this. And you can see the top one is the strong beat and the bottom one is the weak beat. And so on and so forth. I gotta move me here. All right, now we got our beat. And when I play it, you'll hear it. And let's say you wanted to change what it sounds like. So here you say it says electronic. If I click on that, we'll get blocks. Or a drum kit. I like the drum kit. Let's keep the drum kit. Then all the blocks up here uh, represent a different note. And when you play them, you get your different notes that you can play with. Let's go ahead and make a song that maybe we're all really familiar with. me again okay so now when I play it it sounds like this pretty neat right and then you can add more blocks on top of the same beat to add a chord if you understand that change this one just a little bit now let's hear what it sounds like and there we have our twinkle twinkle little star you can also change the sound of your song. So here I have marimba. If I click on it, maybe I want a piano sound. Or maybe I want a string sound. You can keep playing with those to make uh, to find the one that you like. Here the tempo changes the speed of the music. So if I want it to go really fast, or if I want it to go really slow, And then there's also this settings button here, where if you know anything about this, about these things here, such as your scale, the length of how, how long you want your song to be. So if I click this and make it as long as possible, you'll see it get a lot longer. Um, you can have it start on a specific note for whichever scale. You can also change the range of the music and you can also split the beats. And then you can see it really changes how it looks. So you have a lot more room to be creative. And then after all of that, you can click save right here. And here you'll get a link and you can copy this link and you can share it with friends and family uh, so they can hear the song that you made. You can also download it as a sound file, as a MIDI file or a WAV file. 
Another really cool tool on the Chrome Music Lab is the Rhythm Monkeys. When I click on the Rhythm Monkeys here, you can control the different, uh, the, when the, the, the monkeys play the different instruments. It makes some really cool beats. If I click this arrow here, now you get the monsters. So if you ever wanted to do things to create really cool beats, this is a great one as well. Another really fun one that's one of my students' favorites is the voice spinner. So when you click record, and it's recording me right now. Oh, we'll try that again. Hello, my name is Mr. Alegria. And then I'm going to start moving it a little bit. And you can start hearing it say me. It's really slow. Mr. Alegria. Hello, my name is Mr. Alegria. But then I can reverse it. So you can have lots of fun manipulating the sound that way. Another really fun tool is the spectrogram. And here you can visualize music as it goes. So we can hear, we can click this flute uh, button right here and it'll play a flute and you can see the sound that it makes. And you can see as it goes up, so does the, uh, uh, so does the sound. You can also press the finger tool here and you can move and really visualize it yourself. If you have a touch screen and you're using this something with the touch screen, it's a lot more fun. But the most fun about this one is the microphone one because now you can visualize my voice right up on there. And if you had an instrument, you could also see what your instrument sounds like uh, through the spectrogram. So, woo, and you can see there, that's how I did that there. Pretty neat. And one of the last ones I'll show you here is the piano roll. So the piano roll already has a preset tune in there. And it's a really famous piano tune. But the best part about it is, is you can change it from sounding like a piano, sounding like a synthesizer, or you can sample your own sound and it'll automatically put it in there. Let's go ahead and sample my voice. So when I click on this record button, it's going to record me for a short while, and then all the, uh, all the uh, uh, sounds that come out will be my voice. Oh, now let's listen. You can have lots of fun with this. Maybe you can get your dog to bark on the right time. You can also do it with different songs. Lots of fun. So I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial on Chrome Music Lab. There's still so many things that you can go and see on it. Lots of opportunities to be creative and you can share almost everything that you put together. So I really hope to see your, uh, your Chrome Music Lab song creations uh, sometime soon. Um, and uh, I hope you really enjoy everything that Chrome Music Lab has to offer. Bye.